everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, if you are regulars around here, you might be shocked that this isn't my usual best and worst purchases video. I usually do this around this time of year and I look back on the year at some of my wins and some of my loses when it comes to luxury. I wasn't able to put that video together this year because I didn't think that I had any fails whatsoever. I looked through everything and I couldn't find anything that I felt like I'd really made a mistake on, especially when it comes to the luxury pieces in my wardrobe. And so what this meant to me was that I have finally found that really happy balance between wanting to buy luxury pieces and not buying into trend pieces. And it's something that I'm really looking to hone even further throughout this year and into my further luxury <laughs> purchases. I think over the last few years, I've got a little bit bored and a little bit tired when it comes to luxury trend bags being launched. It, they just seem like they're never ending. And I've really edited down my bag collection and been quite selective, especially over the last year when it comes to my purchasing. And from what I can remember, I only bought, and I say only, but I only bought around four or five handbags last year, and all of which I am still wearing and loving today. That was not the norm. Um, we all remember the Bottega bag incident. <laughs> so what I really wanted to do in this video was to put together my best, 10 handbags ever for you to purchase. And I wanted to try and make sure that I could at least cater to as many uh, budgets as possible. Now I don't have all of these handbags in my collections, but as, as far as I'm concerned, they are timeless, they are elegant, and they are classics. And that is what I am always trying to buy and incorporate more into my wardrobe. So without further rambling, I hope that this is gonna be the one guide you need to get the most out of your handbag purchase, to ensure that your handbag purchases aren't mistakes, to ensure that they are timeless in your own wardrobes, and that you're getting the most out of your money. So hopefully, in this video, I am gonna help you do that. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So I think I'm gonna start right at the lowest budget. And this is a bag that I have been admiring for such a long time. I found them on Instagram and I really felt like their accessories, their craftsmanship, and the colors and tones that they were using were really elegant and really timeless. The brand is Bonaventura and I found them on Instagram randomly one day and the bag that I'm particularly interested in is the Emma bag. It comes in two different sizes and a handful of different colors as well as a canvas option as well. Now there's a particular sort of grayish mushroom color which I feel is their absolute hero piece. They've also collaborated with an influencer on their mini version and if you are not new around here, you'll know that mini bags are my absolute favorites and that is the one that I've got my particular eye on in this case. Now these bags retail for just over 500 pounds and for the shape, the craftsmanship, the colors, and the overall elegance of the bag, I felt like this particular price point was really good. The bag nods to the Louis Vuitton Alma bag as well as the Hermes Bolide bag. It has that kind of bowler bag style to it, but it also has the top handle and the crossbody, which I think is really, really important for a timeless bag. To be able to wear your bag crossbody and also make use of elegant top handles, I think is really important. It gives the bag versatility, comfort, and I've always found that bags that have the jewel straps stay in my collection for the absolute longest. The brand was founded in Milan, but its flagship is in Tokyo. The leather that they use is German leather, and it sounds like they really put a lot of emphasis on the craftsmanship and the, the materials used, whilst also keeping their costs lower, which I think has made a really classic style bag much more attainable. Now, it's not the cheapest on the market, and you're certainly not gonna find it on the high street, and you will have to order online, but I think if you're looking to make that first jump, this is a really great piece to buy. Now, I haven't purchased the bag myself, and it was something that I really thought about doing. I don't know whether I should maybe purchase one and do an overall first impressions of it, because I'm so intrigued by this brand, and I really think that we're gonna see some exciting colorways of this bag, and also see it a lot more on Instagram, and on other influencers online as well. But the only thing with Bonaventura is there isn't really any 
history or heritage behind the brand, which is something that I personally really love looking for when I'm purchasing a bag. But hopefully some of the other bags that I'm gonna to talk to you about will have enough history if that is something that you are looking for. But I will pop links to Bonaventura in the description box down below, along with all of the other bags that I'm gonna to talk to you about today. Next up, we have Louis Vuitton. And I feel like Louis Vuitton isn't really, like it's not getting the um, exposure and love that I feel a lot of handbag brands are being shown at the moment. I think that Chanel is being talked about a lot, um, Hermes, but I feel like LV just isn't getting that love, especially when Louis Vuitton is the one brand that has one of the most beautiful histories I think I've ever come across. And it has completely stolen my heart. You'll know that I'm a big fan of their trunks, I love collecting them, and I'm also a big fan of their bags. However, the two styles of bags that I'm gonna to speak to you about today, I don't actually have in my collection either. However, one of them I have had, and the other one I have loved for such a long time. You probably already know which bags I'm gonna to talk to you about, but it is the Alma bag, particularly the Alma BB, because I think that's a really, really lovely sized bag, and also the Speedy. And with the Speedy, it's the uh, Speedy 25, 35, and the Nano. I think they're all great bags. Now, I personally love Louis Vuitton monogramming. I think as far as iconic monogramming, it's the, the pinnacle. I believe that they are the people that founded uh, monogramming in general, and their monogramming was born in 1896, I think. I've tried to do as much uh, research on this as possible, but it's not going anywhere. This monogramming has been in play for decades, and that really is a testament to the timelessness of their monogram bags. You can pick up the Speedy for £920 when you go for the nano size. And it was launched in the 1930s and actually ended up being one of Audrey Hepburn's most loved and favorite bags. So I feel like that in itself puts the Speedy bag in the hall of fame when it comes to handbags. It's an icon. I've actually had two Speedy 30s over the years. Um, I think when I was first starting my handbag collection, I purchased one secondhand and then sold it on and treated myself to a brand new one. And it was such a moment. <laughs> but I haven't ever owned the Alma bag, but I just love it. Whenever I see someone wearing it, I just think it looks so elegant. Again, with the top handle and the crossbody, with those rich tones that Louis Vuitton does so well, I think this bag is an absolute stunner. And I don't know how they've managed to do it, but the browns and the tans that they use on their bags when they're using the monogramming just look good with every outfit. It doesn't matter what color you're wearing, it always looks good. The Alma bag is actually one of Louis Vuitton's most sought after bags. And that's why I think I just don't think it gets enough love online. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and it was actually worn by Coco Chanel. It was the only bag that she would wear other than her own creations. So again, two handbags, two very different bags, but icons in their own right. And I just think they're going absolutely nowhere. So they're really gonna stand the test of time in your wardrobe and their pricing is nowhere near the craziness that you can see when it comes to some handbags. And we're gonna get to that. <laughs> Next up, we have a bag that I do have in my wardrobe. It's the Fendi Peekaboo. Now I purchased this secondhand because there was just so many available that I think you could possibly pick one of these up really easily secondhand on places like Vestiaire and Cellier and places like that. This is the mini size and it's the black with the gold hardware and it retails for about 2,900 pounds. However, I paid 1,000 pounds for this and the money went to charity, so that was a win. It's called the Peekaboo because it has this kind of half and half structure which often falls forward and there are often designs or detailing on the inside of the bag which are revealed by this front bit dropping down. So that's where it gets its name from, like the children's game Peekaboo, basically. I personally think that the mini size is my favorite because I can fit so, so much stuff in here, but it still looks very cute with dresses. It doesn't overwhelm the dress. It's got the top handle and it's got the crossbody strap as well. It comes in a multitude of colors, but for me, if you're buying your first bag, I would always say to go for neutrals, if not blacks, because you are going to get the most wear out of it, but also 
black is going to wear the best because you're not going to get marks on it as much. Um, it generally just tends to look better for a longer period of time. It has become one of Fendi's most iconic bags. However, it isn't steeped in history like the Louis Vuitton bags, for example. Fendi Peekaboo was actually designed by Sylvia Venturini Fendi, so she's the granddaughter. Um, but I, I believe that that's in like the last 20 years. So it doesn't have the brand heritage, the iconic feel. I also kind of like this one as a bit of a nod to an Hermes. Like this has that same understated feeling. There's no heavy branding. It just has this tiny little lock closure. So I feel it has a sort of timeless elegance that a lot of bags today don't have. So I think that this is one of the ones that even if Fendi one day stop making them, it's always gonna be an icon because the shape is so timeless. It's a shape that we've seen time and time again throughout the years, um, and it's a versatile piece in your wardrobe. Next up, we have another bag that I have in my wardrobe. It is the Lady Dior. Now I have loved and loved and loved the Lady Dior's over the years. I have a few in my collection. This particular one is the mini. I have the small and I also have two mediums. Um, and I've sold a medium as well. They are like my collector bags. I love their, their items they do that maybe are a little bit limited edition, um, but in their own right, they are very, very iconic for the brand. Now they were actually created in 1995. So again, they don't have, you know, centuries or decades of history around them, but they are a very, very important part of British history, I would say now, because Princess Diana is basically the person that put this bag on the map. She wore it absolutely everywhere in lots of different styles. So I think it really did earn its name, the Lady Dior. I also feel like this is Dior, like in a personal opinion sense, this is what Dior is to me. It's that femininity, it's that softness with that Parisian edge, but I definitely feel like a lot of the styles over the years now don't necessarily uh, speak to that classic Dior style. A lot of it's quite edgy, there's like puffer jackets and really big branding, but this for me will always be the Dior that I love. And I definitely don't think that the Lady Dior is going anywhere. In fact, I know that there will probably be many more purchases for Lady Dior's from myself over the coming years. As a bag, personally, I would say the small is the best Size. The medium is just a little bit too big, but it's good if you want it as a work bag. Generally, it comes down to personal preference, but this is like the best going out bag ever. I love it. It's so elegant and it's always quite good to contrast with quite an edgy outfit as well. But this is definitely one of my most worn handbags and I absolutely love it. So it will always be a bag that I recommend if someone is looking to buy something that is timeless, beautiful and elegant as well. <laughs> Next up is another bag that I do have in my collection. It is the Chanel Trendy. And actually finding out a lot of information about this bag was quite difficult because it's quite a new style, like literally in the last few years. 2014 to be precise. It was supposed to be a seasonal bag, but it was so popular that they've made it an icon basically. I think it's a really, really great option. In fact, I prefer this to the classic flat bag. I think it's so much easier to wear. The top handle is brilliant. The structure of it is absolutely beautiful. There's lots of space. It's got the crossbody bag and it's a really nice size as well. It's not too big, it's not too small. This is a really, really good work bag. It has all of the details of a good classic Chanel bag. So it's not gonna date and it's not gonna go out of style. Personally, the black is always gonna be the most iconic for me, but again, it comes in so many different colors and styles. I believe that this is 4,650 or something nowadays, although the rate that Chanel is putting up prices at the moment, that could be very, very old news. But it's still a bag that I love. But I would keep this over my classic flat bag. The only reason I keep my classic flat bag is that it's probably gonna be worth something one day, <laughs> even though I've worn it to death already. Oh, and finally, <laughs> you knew it was coming. We have the Hermes bag and we have three of them at the moment. <laughs> now the Hermes bag is a bag that ruffles a few feathers. I think that their buying process, I think a lot of people um, find it a little bit, you know, you can't sit with us kind of vibes. And I get it, I was kind of the same. Um, it wasn't until I owned one of the bags that I then realized how much I loved them. <laughs> 
and I really, really enjoyed shopping for them. And it's actually very nice. I love the way that you cannot impulse purchase them. It is something that you have to consider. And I really believe that I owe it to my Hermes bags that I've slowed down my collection of handbags because I, first of all, wear them so much. I, second of all, now love them so much that the only other bags I really want are other Hermes bags and I can't get them. <laughs> So that's that. <laughs> but there is so much more to them. So first up, I'm gonna tell you about the Birkin. And I would say that personally, the Birkin is my favorite. However, practically, classically, elegantly, and um, usefully, I would say the Kelly's. But the Birkin for me, this one in particular, is just absolutely beautiful. The Birkin was born in 1984. So again, not huge amounts of history in the actual style, but I would say that there is huge amounts of history in the brand and the craftsmanship that they use uh, to make their bag. Each bag is handmade in France. They are hand sewn, hand buffed, hand painted, and hand polished, which takes quite a few days. And so I think that is where Hermes really finds um, the price of their bags, because it's not just on a conveyor belt. These are handcrafted from some of the finest uh, leathers and materials and so you really do feel it when you own one. I remember when I first saw my first ever Hermes bag and I was just kind of like starstruck and I still feel that way now whenever I wear them. They're such a special piece and I have lovingly worn mine so much, so much so that people get cross with me that I wear them so much but they are such beautiful pieces. But the only reason I would suggest the Kelly over the Birkin is purely because of one thing. And if you aren't all saying in unison right now, it doesn't have a crossbody strap, then you don't know me well enough. <laughs> so say hello to the Kelly. This was named after the American actress and princess, uh, Grace Kelly. It was named officially after her in 1977, I believe, because she wore it so much. She fell in love with it on, on a film set somewhere. Don't quote me on this, but she fell in love with it as part of a film and wore the style endlessly and to the point where it became known as the Kelly bag and they officially uh, renamed it. And in fact, there is one famous picture I believe, where she was hiding the fact that she was pregnant using her Hermes Kelly bag, which um, is quite a story in itself. I would say the Cellier style for me is the most edgy and iconic. When I purchased this from Hermes, I was very, very excited and unboxing it was, was just such an experience. I know that I paid £7,880 for this one because I purchased it directly from the store. I didn't purchase my Birkin from store, sadly, so I can't tell you exactly how much I paid for that one. Um, but the thing that I find since owning them is that my handbag consumption has actually slowed. It might not be costing me less, but it's slowed down because I first of all feel like I really kind of lent into the fact that I just love timeless elegant style and once you remove the pressure of following luxury trends especially when it comes to higher price point things such as handbags and shoes you really feel like you start wearing what you own so much more and that's something that i really really love i love finding something that i'm going to wear something that's going to go with everything that looks beautiful that i can dress up differently with a scarf but feel like it's a different piece and that's basically what i champion in my own wardrobe and i'm going to continue to champion that as much as possible i'm not going to be perfect guys i might make mistakes so don't quote me on it but hopefully together we can learn or you can learn from my mistakes but hopefully as part of this video, I might have introduced you to some different price point bags that are gonna stand the test of time in your wardrobes. And also let you know what I think, because this is one of my most asked questions all the time. Lydia, I've got this amount of money, what bag should I buy? But hopefully in this video, you may have found a piece that speaks to your style personally, whilst also um, fitting your price point, or maybe like a special purchase, maybe you're looking to commemorate a moment in your life or just say well done you for getting a new job or something hopefully i've introduced you to some bags that are going to last a lifetime hopefully every time you look at it you can be like oh i'm so glad i got that lydia gave me some really good advice <laughs> if there's any information that you have surrounding these bags please feel free to let me know in the comments it was so much fun researching these bags 
finding out the history about them and sharing it with you. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts. And if you wanted to shop any of the bags wherever possible, I've linked them in the description box down below. If you liked this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I would love it if you hit the subscribe button if you did enjoy it as well, because I have just so much fun filming these videos and I love doing YouTube. So I'd love for you to join me on this journey. Other than that, I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.